Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about BGT amplifiers and we continue with our example number four. This example is a continuation of the example number three where we had a bypass capacitor. In this case we have the bypass capacitor placed in between or the partial part of the emitter resistor and that will cause another interesting result in our analysis. Of course again the MPN to illustrate the concept of what is really happening in the circuit and we'll see now the emitter resistor and also the emitter bypass capacitor together in this amplifier. And this is the bypass capacitor now as said before across a partial part of the emitter resistor completely. We will work out our calculations step by step to show you what's really happening and also verify these on our SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example again. This is the circuit we have discussed in the example number two and three and you saw this emitter resistor there in example number two and then the capacitor bypass capacitor completely across the emitter resistor now the emitter resistor is now divided into parts the first part is re1 which is 200 ohms and this is now re2 which is the second part which is 600 ohms together still 800 but the partial part is now bypassed the rest of the parameters are exact same so we can now look at the effect of this one and we assume again linear region of operation so the collector current is beta times the base current so the solutions we start with DC analysis that means the capacitor are all open and we reduce now again to the circuit here but now the RE here is the summation of RE1 and RE2 that is again 800 so we can just call it RE in this condition we require again the Tefanon's equivalent circuit, which is the Tefanon voltage and Tefanon resistance. That's shown here, so we need to calculate that. That is again the parallel combination of these two resistors, and it will give us 8 kilo ohms. And the voltage here is the voltage divider here at node B from the VCC DC voltage source. That will give us 3 volts. And these are the first steps in our calculations for the DC analysis. Then we apply here in this loop the Kirchhoff voltage law. That means the V Tefanon is equal to the voltage across the R Tefanon plus the VBE and the voltage across RE. Now we know the emitter is, uh, current can be given by beta plus one times the base current. Now when you substitute this in here, you will get together this and that can be written in this format by taking the coefficients of IB together. And then you can express now IB in the rest of the parameters and you see again a nice result that we can use for the later analysis. And this exact ex expression is really important that it can be used now for different values of beta. So first the beta is 100. Now using this formula and beta is 100, we have done this in the previous example number two and three in detail. So we can say let's do this a little bit faster here and then we have the result here for the collector current and also for the emitter current. So DC base, DC collector and DC emitter currents are shown here from this equation. Now using the Kirchhoff voltage law at the output loop that is actually in here so we look at the VCE that means the VCC is equal to this voltage plus the voltage across the collector and emitter junctions in the resistor uh, the voltage across the RE together of course that is the combination of these two resistors now this exact same equation actually so you get again 7.73 as before now the AC analysis and that is now a change because this circuit looks like the uh, circuit we have in example number two but this time this resistor is not 800 but just 200 so that is the difference so it looks the same but the resistor is now smaller so the calculations are all similar, only the value has changed for the part here. So moving on, collecting for this part, you can say again the impedance looking in here is the IB and also looking in here is the I. That means again the same thing, but again, look at it. This is Z, uh, the RE1 instead of RE. So we need to R pi again, the formula we have seen before, and that is then 1004 again. And now we get this and this is now 200 instead of 800. Now we get a little bit smaller value for ZIB. Now when you again look at the ZI, which is the parallel combination of this resistor and the resistor looking in here, that's shown here. It can be written in this form and this form 
and you will have now ZI, which is then 5.81 kilo ohms. Now the voltage gain VO over VI can be separated in two parts, VB over VI times the VO over VB. So from here to there and from here to there. That is, in this case, most handy way to do this. So you separate the problem into smaller problems and this is the voltage division for going from the VI to the base node. Now for the base cur voltage now, this is now the part here for IB times R pi plus the IE times RE1, but that is of course beta plus 1 times the IB. And for VO we have again the minus R IC times RC, but IC is of course beta times IB, so we have this expression again. Taking that together, we have this expression and then we can divide by the IBs here. We have this expression. Now we take this and this in here, so that means then we get the following. Taking this together, we have this expression. Now we can substitute the zi and the r pi and also the beta. And we have now this expression. Now what we have here as a value is minus, for voltage gain, minus 8.7 approximately. You see, in example number 2, we had here minus 2.3. In example number 2, that was minus 2.3. In example number 3, we had here uh, minus 150 approximately. So very large number. Now it has again reduced, but it is larger than in example number two, but it has some effect. So it has some advantages. So we really pay the price by lowering the gain, looking at example number three enormously from 100 to just 8.7, but it will uh, create a stable voltage gain. We will see shortly when we go from beta to 200 and 300. So let's look at the uh, simulation result also for the DC analysis. Again, the same business here as in example number two and three. So we can see this exact same, almost very close to what we have calculated. So these are verified. And also the transient response. We see we have this voltage gain we have determined. Again, the blue line is the input, which is this 10 millivolts peak, 10 kilohertz the frequency. The red line is the output. Again, the inversion here, you see that that's the minus sign. And you see the peak peak value here is 173 millivolts. So if you do the simple calculation, you will get minus 8.65, which is very close to minus 8.69. This is a really nice result. Okay. Now we move on and exactly the procedure for beta is 200 and then the other one is for beta is 300. So we will do that a little bit faster again. So IB first, then IC, then IE. And then we calculate the VCE. So those are exact same as in example number two and three. So we go to the AC analysis, exact same circuit again. So we move on and calculate now the ZIB and ZI in this example. Now this is R pi again, plus the beta plus one times the RE1. That means R pi we need to calculate, we have it. We can substitute in here using the beta of 200. We have now 42.1 kilo ohms. Again, the ZI is a parallel combination of this and the ZIB, which you see here. So we get this one, and it will give us the 6.72 kilo ohms for ZI. Again, the gain formula can be split in two parts. This part for the voltage division, and for VB and VO, you get the expression here, and you have now the expression also for VO over VB. Now, taking that together, Again, multiplying here and then substitute the values. You will now get minus 8.84. So you see this very close to what we had for beta as 100. So going from 100 to 200, the gain has changed very, very, very slightly. That is the effect of this little bit bypass capacitor actually left over. So does the, the bypass the capacitor, I mean the emitter resistor is not bypassed completely. But you gave, you gave a lot of gain, but that is kind of an optimum or the balance you need to find in your circuit design. Okay, looking at the DC analysis in the simulator. Again, these values here for the base collector, emitter, etc. are already close to what we have calculated. Now looking at the transient response analysis, you see the, again, the green is the input. And the red is the output. In this case, it's the green, not the blue one. So we have now the input is the exact same. Peak peak is 20 millivolts. You see now the output voltage for the, this case red one is 176 millivolts. 
So you do the simple math, you get minus 8.80. And this is minus 8.84 we have calculated. So also very close to what we have simulated here. Now, looking at the final one, which is the beta 300, again, same calculations, IC, IB, etc. And then VCE, and all the same, and also the simple AC model again for this circuit. Those are exact same, only change is the beta and also the changes uh, because of that value of the beta. Now looking at the ZIB again and ZI, and we need to again determine the R pi for specific IB here. There is on 2813 ohms. You substitute the values here, you will get 63.0 kilo ohms. ZI is again this expression. You substitute everything in here, you will get ZI of 7.10 kilo ohms. Again, the gain formula for our uh, circuit, the voltage gain, split in two parts together, VB over VI and then VO over VB. Again, same expression actually. So you can now substitute the new value of RPI, new value of ZI, and also the value for beta, for this case 300. Now you get minus 8.90. So you see, it is the beta has changed enormously, but the gain did not, which is a very nice result. Let's also look at the DC results, DC analysis for the simulations. You see these are very close to what we have calculated. And also the transient response can be also seen here. The blue is now the input. Again, peak peak input voltage is 20 milli, but the output has now 177 milli volts, looking at the maximum and the minimum. So again, this basic calculation, we get minus 8.85 as gain. You see again the sign inversion that's due to the minus sign. So you see the calculations and the simulations do confirm each other really well. So we will now summary, summarize everything, summary of the calculation result. This is the beta 100, 200 and 300. These are the base currents, collector emitter currents and also the collector emitter voltages and the gains. You see the enormous change the beta does not change enormous change in the voltage gain. That is the stable design here, and that is the proof that this is a better design than the example number two. So, uh, the simulation of the results for the DC analysis are shown here again in the circuits for each beta. Looking also at the transient responses for this circuit, you see here the first one for beta is 100, beta is 200, and this is for beta is 300. And the gain was here minus 8.65, minus 8.80, and minus 8.85. And those are, again, very really close to what we have calculated. And the most important message here for this circuit is by bypassing a part of the emitter resistor, you leave out in the AC also a part of the emitter resistor, and that will stabilize your voltage gain. But you will give away a lot of gain in this case going actually almost from 150 or 40 or 80 to almost to minus 8.7 or 8.9 approximately in this case. But that is a compromise you need to make and depends on your application. So if you need a lot of gain and not much a stability, stable of, of the stability of your gain is not that, that important, then you might go for the situation or the design example number three. And for this case, you have a quite stable design, although the beta has changed enormously. All right, guys, this is our fourth example, looking at the BGT amplifiers using the MPN BGT. And now we have partially bypassed the emitter resistor and also looked at the stable voltage gain design. We will, of course, continue with these examples and then actually expanding this circuit further by connecting also a load here. That will be our example number five and also see what kind of effect it has in the parameters like the voltage gain. If you have any questions about this example or the examples before, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.